Good morning, everyone. We're going to talk about locks and alarms today. Um, one of the first things you need to do before you get locks and uh, uh, alarms, you need to have a good door. Because if you're not, if you have a real thin plywood door and it's an exterior door, uh, lock is not going to do you any good. Because if you've got like a bedroom door, most of them are thin, plywood, a uh, person can put their foot right through it. So the lock's not really going to help you there. But what you need is a good metal, good solid door, good solid wood door. Now one of the things on the doors that you need to make sure, you see the little screws inside here where the deadbolt's coming out? Uh, those are also going to the facing of the door. Make sure those screws are at least an inch to an inch and a half long because they put the little quarter inch screws in there when they come with it. But change those out and put uh, longer screws in there. And that gives it more support in case someone's trying to kick the door in. It'll give you more support on your, your door. Um, also, uh, for your exterior doors, you may limit how much glass you put in there. If you put a lot of glass in there, then somebody's going to break the door open. Um, for instance, a lot of your French doors. If you got French doors, they're easy to kick in. And if you got a lock such as this, where it's like key on the outside and open this way, a lot of people will break those French doors and then just wrench, reach in and turn and open it. Now, I know the fire department doesn't really like these type locks, but on French doors, um, if you don't want anyone to get in, a lot of times the key on each side. But what you, I recommend you do if you decide to use a double key lock is uh, get hide your key somewhere in the house in two different places uh, where you can know where they are. That in case someone removes one and doesn't place it back, you've got a backup key. And you don't have to let anyone know where it is, but hide that key on the inside. And of course, we always say don't hide a key on the outside. Because if you hide a key on the outside, someone's going to see you hide it. Uh, you can't go outside of your house pretty much even late at night that someone doesn't see you outside in your yard roaming around. Someone will see you. So uh, be careful there. Now there's different types of locks for your doors. Of course you've got your regular lock on your door. But I recommend that on all exterior doors you have a deadbolt. Have a deadbolt. And you need this deadbolt to go in uh, at least a half inch or longer. You need that to go inside there. And that supports you. If you've got a dead boat, uh, they can't slide a credit card in. And see, once this is pushed out, you can't slide a credit card in or anything to push it back in as you would in the other locks. Uh, of course, like I say, this is a dead boat here. And uh, this is where you got like a solid door and you don't have any glass here. And then you've got to where you can just turn and uh, lock it that way. But the locks, uh, you can get many different brands. Um, they do make locks that people can't make master keys to, to where you can't open them. But now they're expensive but uh, they're, they're more secure because there's a lot of master keys that can fit a lot of locks and uh, you don't want those out there. Also with locks, if you buy a new home, change the locks because you don't know how many keys are out there. If you buy a new home and they say, okay, here's four keys, how many keys did they make for their cousins, their relatives, and everyone else to your home? So for your safety and peace of mind, I would go to the expense, which is not very expensive, to buy some new locks 
and put me new locks in. I would not use the same old lock. And the people, it's not that they're not trustworthy. To me, it's just safer because they may have lent someone a key and they may have made a copy. Uh, would you run by my house, pick this up, or whatever? You never know. You never know how many keys are possibly out there. Yes, ma'am. Why can't you just have it rekeyed rather than putting new locks in? You can. If it's the type lock that they can rekey, you can have it rekeyed. Yes, you can have a locksmith and have it rekeyed. Yes, that's possible. You can have it rekeyed. And uh, there's a lot of locksmiths, especially here in Murfreesboro, that do that. They do uh, come to your home and uh, rekey them, or you can take the locks off, take them to them. Um, I'd prefer them to come to my home and rekey it and uh, set it up and rekey it what, however you like. But yeah, they can rekey it. And uh, most of the places, uh, your hardware stores and different places that sell locks, a lot of them, if you want one key to open all of your locks, they can key it to where the same key opens all of your locks. So that way you don't have to walk around with 15 different keys, one to the front door, one to the garage door, one to this door. You can have them rekeyed to where just one lock will open all of the keys. Uh, but like I say, all on all your exterior doors, have a deadbolt. Be sure that you've got a deadbolt in there uh, because that, that makes it a little more secure. Now, is that 100% foolproof? No. They can tear the door frame off even though that's a metal door frame here and that looks like a pretty solid door, they can still get in if they hit it hard enough and long enough. They're going to eventually get in, but don't make it easy for them. Hopefully during the time that they're trying to get in that you have a neighbor that hears the noise, someone that passed by, hopefully sees someone trying to get in your home, but what it will do, it will slow them down it will really slow them down from getting in your home. Now, locks, yes sir? If you had a deadbolt and some of the secure locks like that, what do emergency people generally have to do to get in? Well, they'll do whatever it takes if you have an emergency to get in. They, they, can, they, they can get in. Even if it, if an emergency, you have to break out a window or whatever to get to you, emergency people will get to you if they need to get to you. Yeah, they'll come in. We'll get in there somehow to get to you. But what we're trying to do as far as the criminal is slow the criminal down. Now, you know, they get in banks, they get in bank vaults, they get in everything else, so nothing is really 100% foolproof. But what you can do is you can make it a hard target, meaning, well, this door's a solid door, it's a steel door or a solid wood door. It's got dead bolts on it. That's not as easy. I'm going to move on to somewhere else. In other words, they don't want anything that's going to be time consuming. Criminals doesn't like three basic things. They don't like anything that's time consuming. They don't like lights and they don't like noise. And that's where your alarms come in. They don't like any of that type stuff. So uh, what you need to do is, is make sure that you got good locks on there, good solid locks. Uh, they do make real cheap locks, but you can pretty much look at a lock and tell how it's made by holding it and the weight of it and uh, the way the mechanism of it works. When you turn it, you can look and see if it's pretty solid or is it real loose and flimsy. Just take a look at the locks and things that you buy. and. and uh, look at them, it's like you would anything else. But on securing your home, you want to walk around your home and look, because that's what a criminal does. They walk around and try to find the easiest way into your home. So when you got time and the weather permits, walk around your home. Say, so now what's the easiest way if I lock myself out to get in my home? And that will tell you what a criminal is doing. They're walking around your home did they leave a window unlocked? Did they leave a window cracked? Did they leave any way for me to get in that home fairly easy? So if you got locks on your windows, 
lock those things when you leave. If you're going out to dinner somewhere, I understand you want fresh air in the summer to come in, but while you are gone away from your home, make sure those are locked. Make sure they're secure. I understand you may have screens on them, but those screens are easily torn and easily cut. So make sure that you lock them. Now, there is a what we call a thumb rule, and that is close your fist and put your thumb up if you're going to have fresh air in and you've got a lock on it to where that window only comes up thumb high. Because what some criminals do is they get small kids and if their head can get in, then their body can get in and they'll put that child in there and say, go unlock the door for me. This happens. So if you use the thumb rule, most children's head is not that small. So you got fresh air coming in, but you got it locked to where no one can raise it or lower it or, or mess with it any further. So uh, think about that when you're you know, leaving your windows cracked or whatever. Make sure that you secure them. Um, also, when you're walking around your home, don't think people can't get up to your second floor you got to make sure that those windows are locked as well. Because what we do, and we don't think about it, a lot of times we're working on gutters, we're working on painting outside, and we go, well, you know, it's lunchtime. I think I'll go take a break. I think I'll go to the local restaurant and get me a snack or get me something to eat. And you lift that ladder up there, and then you got that window open that's up there. And what have you done? You left the place for them to go in. So make sure that all the ladders, tools, and anything that you've got, if you're building a home, or not a home, but a uh, dog house or repairing something outside, and you have tools outside, take those in. Take the time, take the extra minute or two to set those tools in where you can lock them inside of your home. Don't leave them out there and think, well, I'm going to leave everything out here. I'll be back in 15, 20, 30 minutes. Well, you've left tools for them to use to break in your home. Most criminals this day and time don't bring tools with them. They do not bring tools with them because we provide the criminals tools to get in our home. And so that's what we have to stop and think about. We have to think about locking our tool sheds locking all of our tools up. Don't leave tools, axe, crowbars, anything in the open. Shovels, don't leave all that out in the open because those are tools that can be used to get into your home. So what you do is you make sure that all of those things are locked away. You have any questions about these type locks? Another locks that you have is padlocks. Now they make different types of locks. This lock here is on a padlock and what it does with the little secure things on each side is to keep people using dead bolts. And they make different type of locks to where you can't use dead bolt cutters, I mean uh, bolt cutters to cut them open. You have to, uh, uh, different companies make uh, different type locks. But what they use is bolt cutters to cut your locks off, and these are to protect it to keep from using those bolt cutters. Now, trailer hitches, you slide these through, you want to put a lock on that because if you've got a trailer, you've got a boat trailer that you're pulling, you don't want someone to pull it off. So put a lock on it. Make it a little harder for them to get. Uh, bicycle lock. You know, maybe you're riding a bicycle. Attention, maybe you have it. Wade on line one. If you call Charles Wade. And uh, if you've got a bicycle lock, a bicycle, put a bolt, put a lock on it. Lock it down. Uh, lock it to a tree. Lock it to something that is stationary that they're not going to uh, get up very easily. But trusting leaving your bicycle somewhere and see, they have places on the square here that you can park your bicycle, but put a lock on it. 
because you don't want them to uh, just walk off with your, your bicycle. And this day and time, people will do it. They'll take off with it. They make, like I say, many different types of locks. They make remote locks to where if you uh, want to open locks, you've got locks on your garage doors. You know the little string on your garage door? That's a secure lock. So if you're going to be out of town, pull that, and that disengages the motor to your uh, garage door opener. And then you've got little slide locks on each side of your uh, garage door. And that's so that someone can't pull it up or down. And a lot of times if they don't have the little slide locks, people put screwdrivers or something in there to where it can't be raised up. But now don't forget when you get back that you engage that door opener and you got to take the, uh, the secure locks off the side because if not, then you'll probably be paying for another motor or having somebody repair your garage door. So uh, do remember to take those out. But yeah, if you're going out of town and going to be gone for a while, secure that garage door opener because there, the garage door openers are on, only on several different frequencies. Now, some of your garage door openers, um, they operate, like I say, by remote. And what you need to do with those is if you can afford to get one that scrambles or roams, they have some that the frequency roams. And when you punch it, the, the garage door opener to open it, it'll lock in to that particular frequency and then open your door because there's only basically three to four or five frequencies that are used to open garage doors and uh, you want to be sure you secure that. That's why you disengage your garage door opener. And one thing I tell everyone, your garage door opener has a pad on it and in that garage door opener there is uh, a set of numbers, and that's to set your own code. Do not leave that at zero. When it comes from the factory, they're set at zero. Do not leave that set at zero. Change it to your code. You have to match up the code in the remote to the code that's in the motor. And then once you match that up, then your door will open back and forth. But if you leave it at zero, you know, your neighbor may be trying to open their garage door and theirs is set at zero and they'll open yours too. So stop and think about that. You want to change that code in there. Unless you got one that scrambles or unless you got one that wrongs. But you want to make sure that you do that. Um, a lot of different people look when you go to look for locks for different things, always think about your keys. Because what a lot of people don't realize is I have a big set of keys here, okay? And these keys open a lot of stuff at my work and my home, okay? So if I'm going to have my vehicle worked on, and some places you can have your vehicle worked on and go shopping, don't leave your whole set of keys there. It's not that the place you get it worked on has any problem. You know, most of those places I trust, but they hire human beings, you know, and you don't know who to trust, and they trust them as employees, but then again, they don't fully know them completely. So when you're going to get your vehicle repaired, most cars now have what they call a valet key. That valet key only starts and opens the door. But don't leave your whole set of keys because most places you have your vehicle worked on, what do they make? Keys. So they could sit there and make all of these keys by the time they get back to your vehicle. And they've got a key to your home, same as you do. And it's not hard to get a design or trace a design in a key and have that key cut out. So what you want to do is make sure that you only leave the key that is necessary to get in and out of the vehicle and start the vehicle 
for them to repair it. But you don't want to leave your whole set of keys. Uh, and the same as when I talk about identity theft, uh, you don't want to leave all your mail, your important papers in the car. You get your car worked on, you drop it off, someone picks you up. Guess what's in your car? You got your bank account, you got everything left right there in your car. You need to take all of that stuff out. All your important papers, bank accounts, personal effects, take all and clear all of that stuff out before you have your vehicle worked on. Any other questions about locks? Just remember, have a solid door that you put your locks in. All your exterior doors should have a deadbolt lock on it. And always secure your keys. Now we'll talk a little bit about alarms. You can get several different types of alarms. Alarms today are very elaborate. You can get alarms to where you want someone to go in your home. You say, could you run by my, tell your neighbor, say, hey, uh, could you run by and pick up something from my home, somebody that you trust? Well, with your cell phone, you can unlock your home through alarms. They make alarms to where you can disengage the alarm and fix it to where your neighbors can go in. They also have it to where when your kids get home and they disengage the alarm, it can show up on your phone and there's a camera and you can see who's going in your home. So it's just depending on how much money you want to put into an alarm system. They make alarm systems to where you can have glass breakage. So if there's the noise that has the frequency of glass breaking, it'll set the alarm off. You have alarms that set the smoke detectors off. You have alarms that you can go up and punch or even have a little remote for seniors that you can punch and it'll set it off saying, I need an ambulance here or I need the fire department here. There's all different kinds of alarms. So what I tell people about alarms, you get the alarm that you need and get the alarm that you can afford. And the best that you can afford, you know, sure you may not get the ones that <coughs> operate off your phone or whatever, but get a decent alarm. If you got a decent alarm system, that will work. Now, the cheaper alarm systems that you get, you have to think about one thing, especially here in the city. They allow you, I think it's three false alarms before you get a fine. And that's understandable because if we answered nothing but alarms all day long, if you had a wreck, a heart attack, or someone breaking in on you, and we're answering all these false alarms, there's an issue. So try to get a decent alarm, one that will fit your needs, and uh, ask questions. Always ask questions. A lot of times people want video along with their alarm system and they want cameras around their house. Cameras are good, but one thing you need to do when you get a camera around your house is have them operate the camera during the daylight, during dust dark, and during dark. Because when they show you a camera a lot of times, they'll show it to you in the daytime. Pretty picture. Yeah, you can recognize anyone. But as soon as it gets dust dark, or as soon as it gets dark, I can't tell who that is. That's just a figure. So another thing, too, is, and people that have a cell cameras should know this, is the type lighting that you need. Because some lighting will make clothes, instead of making them look blue, they'll make them look green, or make vice versa, which green may be blue. So if you are into getting a color setup system, uh, make sure you know that. Also, with alarms and uh, you're setting up cameras and video, make sure that if you get a remote system, that you want a system that, uh, it's scrambled. You don't want a system 
that comes in and you got a camera system that's set up and it transmits on a certain frequency. In other words, wireless cameras. Well, you got cameras on the outside of your home and they're showing your front door, they're showing the side or whatever. If someone else picks up that same frequency, they could be down the street watching you come and go in your home and what goes on around your home. So you want that scramble. So you want a system to scramble. Yes, ma'am. If you don't have an alarm, how much of a deterrent is it to a thief? You just put a sign in your yard on the window, on the door, saying you have one. Well, uh, that is somewhat of a deterrent to some. And then there's some that don't care. There's some that don't care. Give you an example of that. We had a burglary at one of our stores here in town. And they had alarm system, they had cameras, but what they done is they timed themselves, they knew the alarm was going off, they knew that there was security even in that mall that th where they were breaking into. They timed themselves and there's only oh, seven or eight of them involved. They went in, knew what they were getting, knew what they were going, but these were professional guys. Went in, but there's some that don't care. You got someone that is hooked on drugs and they got to get something or they know you've got something. Uh, some of them don't care, but yeah, it will deter some. Some will go, oh, well, they got an alarm system. I won't do it. But will it deter all? No, it will not deter all. And another thing that I always tell people, uh, don't let everyone know your business. Because if you let everyone know what you're doing, when you're doing it, that is a weakness in your security at your home, a weakness in your security in your personal life. Because, believe it or not, on these social sites such as Twitter, Facebook, some people, there is one friend of mine showed me this friend of theirs that even posts when they're not going to be at home. Well, I'm going to go out today and I'll be out. Post on Facebook when they're not going to be at home. They go to Florida. They're posting pictures of each other. We're in Florida. And don't put it on your answering machine either. No, no, don't put it on your answering machine. But a lot of people get on there and I understand they want to boast about their kids and put things on there about their kids. Wait till you're back at home. If you went on a vacation, wait till you're back home and say, we did this in Florida two weeks ago. But don't say, we're in Florida and look at the sun and look at the ocean, okay? Because what you're doing is you're advertising. You're advertising. And most people break into your home because they want to get something out of your home. And we advertise for a lot of people. Uh, just say, Super Bowl's coming up, and you just bought a 50-inch screen TV. Where is the box? Out for the trash man. And what is that doing? <laughs> Hello, I just bought a 50-inch screen TV. So you're telling the criminals, hey, we just got a new TV. Anybody want to come in and break in? So cut that box up. Take a box cutter, cut it up, put it in a bag. Do not leave that out to where you're advertising. Because even though you got these locks, these locks will only help you so, so much. But uh, don't advertise. Don't let people know what's going on around your home. Um, I've always been of the thing of need to know basis. Because even though you're in a restaurant and you're talking, wow, so-and-so just got the income tax back and they don't believe in carrying it to the bank. You know, you may tell someone that and then you have two people in a booth talking and the person behind them is letting them know your business. Man, I would put that in the bank. Yeah, they live off so-and-so over there, and they don't put their money in the bank. That's not good. And like I say, these locks will only help you so much, help you so much there. Any question about alarms? 
or cameras. Now, which type cameras to get? That's where I say you ask questions. Uh, there's many different types, thousands of different cameras, thousands of different companies that make cameras, make alarms, but what you have to do is ask questions. And no question is a silly question because you're paying for it. It's your money, it's your home that you're trying to protect. Ask what it'll do, what it won't do. Uh, and with these cameras, like I say, check the lighting. Because if you put the camera out there to make sure that uh, you want that person identified, today you put a camera out there, it'll look beautiful. You'll get a nice picture of it. Your phone camera will take a picture. But a good example of that is turn the flash off on your camera and try to take a picture at dust dark and try to take a picture at dark. You'll see the difference of what I'm talking about. But they make cameras that will cut through that and give you a nice picture. And they make cameras that have what they call infrared. And it shoots out an infrared signal that lights it up. It may put it in a greenish looking color, but you'll still be able to identify the person. But if you're wanting to use a camera to where it identifies the person, when they're demonstrating that camera, have them demonstrate it in a different light and see if you can identify that person, identify their clothes, or, or whatever you want it to do. But always ask questions. You having someone put locks in, ask questions. I go to buy a car, they want me out of there because I asked a ton of questions. I do. I asked a ton of questions. And uh, you know, when you're paying and investing in something, especially for to protect your home and you're scared, you want to ask a lot of questions. You want to ask questions because you don't want to come back and say, well, I should have asked that question. Any questions? <laughs> no one's got any questions, huh? Yes, ma'am. How much of a deterrent are dogs? Dogs are a pretty good deterrent. They are a pretty good deterrent. Now, are dogs foolproof? No because there's professional people that know how to get around dogs. But yes, dogs are, uh, yeah, they're pretty good to turn. They hear a loud bark and they're like, ain't going in there. No, I'm not going in there. But yeah, dogs, dogs are really good. Yes, they're, they're real good to turn at uh, people breaking in because if they hear the dog, I know I have a small dog and if you knock on the door, it just goes wild, it just starts barking. Don't want noise. Right, they don't want noise and your dog barking is noise. And what I tell people too as another security is most of you have remotes on your car this day and time. Put this key by your bed. If you're home alone or even home with someone and you hear someone you think out in your yard or whatever, key that and set that car alarm off. That's something you can use. All right. Pardon me? <laughs> yes, it's good for finding the parking lot, but also it's good if you think someone's following you and you're shopping and you're going back out to your car. When you get near your car, set your car alarm off. It, it works. It helps. So there's many uses for that remote. You can use it. But uh, one thing I, I do want to repeat, please do not hide a key outside, okay? And what I tell most people, I know it's sort of like a joke, but I tell most people, don't hide a key outside. If you think you're secure and you got a good hiding place to hide it outside, if you went out and hid it in the nude, do you think anybody would see you? Because if you're worried about somebody seeing you then, then you need to be worried about somebody seeing you hide it outside. So the thing is, do not hide it outside. Yes? They, uh, I bought this padlock that has a uh, key, you know, digits on the outside. Keypad, right. Yes, that opens up when I hit the right code. And it's seven digits, so that's... And if my two keys are inside of it. Mm-hmm. 
Now that's, yeah, that's, that's a good lock. As long as it's, it's something that they can't take a hammer and break open very easily. Yeah, if it's a pretty, pretty sturdy, hard metal, whatever, and it's going to take them some time to get into it, yes, you know, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. But your locks are to secure you and to secure your personal effects and to protect you in your home as best as possible. So you want to get whatever you can afford to get the best that you can get to protect you. Well, that's all. Thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm.